One of the most important topics that students at Hogwarts have to study are goblins and the goblin rebellions. I briefly mentioned this in another one of my videos, and many of you asked me to explain it in more detail. Most of this information is scattered throughout many of JK Rowling's writings, and of course bits and pieces from the books, and I put it all together to make one cohesive story, which hopefully you guys find interesting. So in this video, I'm going to explain the history of goblins and everything you need to know about the goblin rebellions. Let's start by going back to what led to the Goblin Rebellions and how the relationship of goblins and wizards became so bad. It actually dates all the way back to 900 AD with Godric Gryffindor, one of the four founders of Hogwarts. At the time, a goblin named Ragnuk was the king of all goblins. As the king, he was the finest silversmith because in goblin culture, the ruler does not work less than others, but rather more and more skillfully. This made Ragnuk the best metalworker in the world, as the goblin species were the most skilled metalworkers, and he was the most skilled of all the goblins. Perhaps Ragnuk's finest work was Godric Gryffindor's sword. It was made to Godric's specifications, and it was Ragnuk's masterpiece, fashioned with pure silver, ruby encrusted, and was an unstoppable weapon. When it was finished, Ragnuk reluctantly gave it to Godric, but as soon as he did, he wanted it back. To get it back, he pretended that Gryffindor had stolen it from him, and Ragnuk sent his goblin minions to steal it back. Gryffindor defended himself with his wand, but did not kill his attackers. Instead, he sent them back to their king, bewitched to deliver a threat, saying that if he ever tried to steal from Gryffindor again, Gryffindor would use the sword to defeat them all. The Goblin King took the threat seriously and left Godric alone, but he remained resentful until he died. This tale became the foundation for the false legend of Gryffindor's theft that resided for many years, especially among goblins. This was the first thing that made goblins angry with wizards, as they believed that their past king had been robbed and threatened by one of the most noble wizards of all time. Following this, goblins further resented wizards for not sharing their secrets of wand lore. They felt that they shared their weapons and other metal workings with wizards, but wizards never returned the favor. Goblins could use magic without wands, but without a wand, their power was limited compared to what humans had. Goblins felt that they had been cheated one too many times by wizards, and they decided to take control of something that was vital to wizards and the entire wizarding world. Money. Gringotts Bank was originally founded by a goblin named Gringot in 1474. There are more than a few curious things in the vaults at Gringotts. Not only did they control all of the money, but they made it too. They forged galleons, sickles, and canuts, each coin stamped with a serial number identifying the goblin who cast it. Despite this, they still did not get the respect that they felt they deserved when the Wizengamot was formed in 1544. The Wizengamot is Britain's high court of law and parliament for the wizarding community. Once again, the goblins and all other magical beings were left out, which infuriated the goblins even more. More and more tension built between wizards and goblins until all hell broke loose. The first Goblin Rebellion took place in 1612. The Goblins, still upset about Gryffindor keeping the sword that Ragnarok had made, took the fight to his home turf. The huge battle took place in Hogsmeade, the village right next to Hogwarts, and where the Hogwarts Express would later stop a couple hundred years after that. The fight would later be described as bloody and vicious. Many of the wizards that fought back against the goblins were store and pub owners in the village. They used one of the inns in the village as the wizard headquarters during the course of the first rebellion. The inn that they used was most likely the three broomsticks as it was as old as Hogsmeade itself. The fight eventually stopped and everything cooled down for a while. Everyone pretty much lost and in the process they caused a lot of damage to Hogsmeade village. The goblins had gotten it out of their system. They fought back and stood up to wizards, something that they had not done since Ragnarok tried to stand up to Gryffindor almost 700 years years before this. In 1707, the Ministry of Magic was formed, and in the atrium of the Ministry, there was a fountain called the Fountain of Magical Brethren. It depicts a witch and a wizard above other creatures who are gazing up at them in awe. The creatures that look up to the human wizards include a centaur, a house elf, and of course, a goblin, once again showing that wizards believed that they were better and more important than goblins and other magical creatures. After the formation of the Ministry of Magic, a group of goblins called the Brotherhood of Goblins, or the BOG, was formed. It was founded by a goblin named Broderick, and their goal was to press for goblin rights, including the right to carry and use a wand, but they were denied by the Ministry many times. One incident made the goblins even more angry when a goblin named Nagnok, a Gringotts employee, was accidentally killed by an untrained security troll sent by the Ministry of Magic. The goblins of course blamed the wizards for his tragic death. 
to further escalate the tension between wizards and goblins, a goblin named Urg the Unclean was dunked in a village pond by a group of wizards in front of the whole village. This drove Urg to be the leader for what would be the second goblin rebellion. He formed an army and led them all to fight back once again against wizards and witches. He would eventually become the number one most wanted by the Ministry of Magic and would eventually be captured and imprisoned, which again did not help calm the tension between goblins and the wizarding community. Urg was later featured on a chocolate frog card for his actions and leadership in the rebellion. For the second Goblin Rebellion, it wasn't just one big battle, but multiple battles that were more thought out and went on for many, many years. In the beginning, the Goblins were winning, forcing Minister for Magic Albert Boot out of office, along with his successor, Basil Flack, who lasted only two months in office before resigning. Many say that both of them made the rebellion worse, Boot badly mismanaging it from the start, and Flack allowing the Goblins to align themselves with werewolves. As Faces Gord took office after Flack and was able to stop a number of goblin revolts. The goblins being aligned with werewolves was a huge disadvantage to wizards as they went from fighting 4 foot goblins to fighting 7 foot vicious werewolves. The wizards realized that the only way to stop them was to get the werewolves to unalign themselves with the goblins. Unfortunately, Gore failed to do this, and many believe that his refusal to establish rehabilitation programs for werewolves ultimately led to them staying on the goblin side for longer than they had to be. This led to more attacks that the wizarding community felt could have been stopped had Gore done what they were pushing for. In one incident of the revolt, a goblin named Hodrod shrunk a bunch of wizards and tried to crush them with his feet, but the ministry caught him before he did and arrested him. This did not sit well with the goblins, and the BOG met with representatives from the Department for the Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures, demanding that he be released. When the ministry refused, it ended in a small riot. Some goblins were able to get hold of wands from wizards, and use them to transfigure a bunch of things and march down the streets, chanting BOG slogans. The revolts continued for 10 years into Gore's term in 1762, but was finally stopped when goblin rebel Vargo was killed in battle. A shocking theory later came up years after the rebellion, which stated that Varga was actually a renegade house elf. One thought that comes to my mind, and just to be clear, this one theory is not fact like the rest of the video, which is all canon and confirmed by Rowling, but could a wizard have sent their house elf to go and fight with the goblins and work its way up, planning on being killed to end the war and the revolts with the wizards coming out on top? That would certainly make an interesting plotline for both the house elf and the end of the war. The aftermath of the Goblin Revolts was still present 200 years later when the Harry Potter series took place. Goblins did not trust wizards, and if they made it seem like they did, they would almost always turn on you. I know goblins, if you struck any kind of bargain with Griphook, you must be exceptionally careful to live up to it. If you don't, he won't be forgiving. We saw this firsthand with Griphook betraying the trio in Gringotts. I said I'd get you in didn't say anything about getting you out. Goblins also believed that whatever they made, like the Sword of Gryffindor, or armor, or anything else, that those objects were not owned by the wizard that bought it, but rather they believed that they were simply renting it from the goblins, and when they died, they should give it back. They would get very angry when wizards would pass on their goblin-made objects to the next generation when they died, because the goblins believed that it was their property. During the events in Goblet of Fire, we also saw goblins hunt down Ludo Bagman after he lost a bet with them. He tried to give them leprechaun gold, which disappears after a few hours, which did not fly with the goblins. They ended up picking Bagman clean, and even though they took everything of value from him, they still asked for more because what he had given them was not enough to cover his debt. Again, they did not trust humans, and in this case, rightly so. Bagman doing this actually led to goblins not trusting either side during the war when Voldemort returned, and ultimately, they stayed neutral, not trusting either side, because both sides were human. Thanks so much for watching, guys. You can follow me on social media, links for that will be in the description. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be listed on my next video, plus a bunch of other rewards, check out my Patreon which is linked down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you press that subscribe button to help grow the channel. Again thank you so much for watching and look out for more great videos on the way.